Is there anything this Dallas Cowboys defense can't do besides maybe keep cornerbacks healthy? Ooh. Well, I mean, they were healthy all last year, right? Like, their cornerbacks were healthy last year. Can't so this, do. This yeah. is something that kind of did pop up. And, man, if uh, if Kelvin Joseph goes down, then, Kevin, we oh, have a real goodness. concern, a real question there. I think we get better. I, I don't know. We do with who? I don't know. <laughs> That's but not a good hey, Mike, Kelvin Mike, Joseph I, I, is not good. I disagree. Um, oh. I don't think that it's, he's not good. I think that he needs to play more football. Uh, and this is something, Kevin. You know, I'm I was also scared at, to criticize Kelvin Joseph. I asked Broadus. <laughs> I, <also, laughs> I asked Broadus this yesterday well, I don't know off the air, means. but with the intention and idea of what I already thought, and Broadus just kind of confirmed what I was thinking about this guy. And I, I think that there are times when you're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what? Why were you even in the vicinity of that penalty? What happened? Yeah. There are also like as that team got confident on, on a Sunday night. Kelvin Joseph steps in and is like, hey, I'm going to make a play right here. He tried to get a pick. He tried to get an interception. I think he needs more more reps, more opportunities. He might, he should get better. I really okay. think that. they, The Cowboys still believe he's an NFL caliber cornerback. Off of that question, what happened to the six foot ten guy we drafted, Nashawn Wright? He is the backup backup to Kelvin Joseph, and now he will take place on I special know he's not teams. He's six foot ten. He's like 6'4", four, right? Yeah, he will now uh, six three. Yes, yeah, something like that. But he will now move into uh, into special teams okay. role where Kelvin Joseph was. All right, so here's where I am concerned a little. Not now. Like we're gonna beat the Texans. I'm gonna whatever seventy seven to zero. Luka Doncic <laughs> to zero. Pretty much playing the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. I think we could probably put Quincy Carter back there and still win the game against the Houston Texans. And that was not the case <laughs> okay. in two thousand. Okay, and whatever year it was. Um, I think. Luckily, there's not great quarterbacks left in the NFC for playoff time. But if Kelvin Joseph is healthy, and I think that you're 20 points better than Tampa. I just think they're horrible, and I watched them last night. I think they're horrible. But if you give Tom Brady enough time, I think that SOB is going to find number one and throw at him as many passes as he can. Yeah. Right. And it worries me that Kelvin Joseph is either going to commit terrible penalties or just do something bad that's going to put you in a predicament. I wish I felt better about Kelvin Joseph. The rest of the defense is awesome. Here's the deal. I don't think Tom Brady will have enough time to pick on Kelvin Joseph. But that is the one thing that worries me is I think Kelvin Joseph is a below average cornerback. But to Corey's point, there is a possibility over the next five games that he gets better and that I don't feel this way come playoff time. Yeah, um, with I, I do agree with Mike that – Kevin, that's the thing. That's the weakness at this point is if they decide they're going to pick on somebody, what do the Cowboys do to combat it? We've seen that Anthony Brown was the guy that they said was the word everybody keeps using. He's the mark. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they would go at him. But Anthony Brown, again, I will lean to he was a 50-50 coin flip that leaned tails. You know, yeah. it was one of those like you just had a little more that you didn't know exactly what you were going to get. But he played tough. He just didn't have quite the year I think we all expected and wanted him to have, considering he had a pretty good year last year. But he is the guy. You're not trying to go pick on Trayvon Diggs. You're, well, you're just, but you've got to figure out somebody. That's the one area of the field. So you kind of try to cover it up with safety. But for the Cowboys to maximize okay. their defense, that's not what they, they need. All right. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Because I, I know you talked about it with Mickey as we felt like maybe a little bit of hyperbole to say this is the best like group of safeties that we've seen in terms of the play is how do you think that slows down the defense if you consistently need to shift over safety help for Kelvin Joseph? Um, it changes a lot of their approach. Like, uh, won't see Donovan Wilson on the blitz so yeah, much. Yeah, no, it, it changes. Well, and it kind of depends also like which package they're using to have sure. Donovan Wilson out there because they love their three uh, their three safety setup where they can. Put all three of them out there, and you're able to stop run. You're also able to cover in case. Um, so yeah, I think it just it does kind of change it. But here's the here's my thing, man. I don't. There's nothing I don't trust about Dan Quinn understanding his personnel. Like this is the this was the biggest failure of Jason Garrett's era was they didn't understand what they couldn't do. They were just like, no, put uh, that guy out there on a Adrian Claiborne. Yeah, it'll be fine all day long. 
Like that's the they didn't understand what they couldn't do. I think Dan Quinn absolutely gets that. So even if something's happening, I think he has a strategy already built in place for if they're going to go pick on Kelvin Joseph and how to stop that. I'm taking this out of Mike likes it. Okay. Because we have defense talk right now. Here was one of my questions in uh, Mike asked all the football questions that I was going to pass along to Mike likes it, but I pass it to you guys right now. How come Sam Williams isn't getting more hype? This dude is a future stud. I get he's not going to be Micah Parsons, but this dude looks like the next Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, there was that play, obviously, where him and Odiki Zua just absolutely like crushed Matt Ryan yeah. in that play. But he, he gets pressure. He gets cons. I don't. I don't. Consistent might be a tough word because he doesn't play a lot of snaps, but he gets pretty good pressure when he's out there. Okay. Who does that sound like? Because I'm telling you, I think Sam Williams is going to turn out to be the player that the Cowboys always hope Randy Gregory would be. You know, because what the Cowboys would always say is, oh, I mean, he won't be, we won't use him in that three down situation, you know, but like, we'll put him out there and he'll make an impact. But hasn't he been pretty good against the run? No, I, he's actually, you can argue he's been better against the run than he has been rushing the passer. But I mean, from an impact perspective, I think he has the potential to truly be that guy. But I think already you're seeing flashes of what they always hope Randy Gregory could be your second or third option at pass rush. But he has been good at stopping the run. Mike, what do you think his most snaps that he's seen this year has been? Like in a one game? Yeah, one game. How many snaps do you usually get on defense per game? Man, I'm looking at Demarcus 70? Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence is his most is 49 this year, 51. In a game? Oh gosh, yeah. then I'll go 20. Six. I'll go half. One more. 27. Okay. So he's had 27, 26, and 25. Everything else is almost below 20s. Yeah. And that's where they're, I think they're still trying to say, okay, we have him. We have Dorrance Armstrong. We have Dante Fowler. We have Demarcus Lawrence. It is, and we have Golston. We have all these other guys. We're getting them snaps. I, and I, I think you. it's just more of, I, instead of him being worn out in the fourth quarter, yeah. you do have something fresh to throw out there. I, I think that Demarcus Lawrence is one of these guys that still has time left in the NFL. So don't get me wrong here. But I think we're about to get close to Sam Williams. This will be a prediction. This is a future prediction. Sam Williams and Micah Parsons, and probably should change the order because Micah Parsons is better, is going to become the best pass rushing duo in the NFL. That would be... I love that prediction. Oh, okay. And so think about... With that in mind, So, we're, but we're not there yet, right? No. But, future, okay. Right. But... Think about that. That's the future. Here's the present. They forced five turnovers in that game, and Dallas is 26 points off of turnovers in the fourth quarter were the most by any team in the last 45 years. Dallas has 48 sacks so far this season, tied with the Bills for the most through 12 games in the last 20 years, and that's without the idea of Sam Williams reaching his potential. That's with now... Uh, season-long injuries to multiple cornerbacks. And I know you might be like, well, yeah, but they're not up pressuring the quarterback. But it works together, you know? And so I think I'm really excited about that. But then this is what I'm most intrigued by is what were we talking about? And I know we got into this a little bit on Black yeah. Friday. But what were we talking about was the fatal flaw with this defense. Can't stop the run, right? True. Can't That's stop gotten the run. a lot better. Last three weeks, you have played – the Vikings with Dalvin Cook, the Giants with Saquon Barkley, and the Colts with Jonathan Taylor. Fair to say we would all agree those are three of the top eight running backs in the league. Fine. Or ten running backs if, if that's you That's what you want to do, yeah. Yeah, if you, you like the number eight. Because I think uh, the higher the better, right? I think those are top three of the top eight. But the point is, 17 carries for 73 yards is what the Vikings got. Go ahead. No, no, no. I like what you're saying because I am just looking forward to Christmas Eve for the Cowboys. Sure. I almost feel like you have bye weeks coming oh, up. Oh, you're dumping on the Jags, they too? suck. <laughs> um, so you're probably going to win by a combined 50 points in the next two weeks. That's how it. horrible yeah. these next two games are, but great for the Dallas Cowboys. Is I'm just looking forward to Christmas Eve. Is I am now, maybe I'm wrong here, I'm starting to get more worried about their receivers than I am their running game. And maybe I'm getting way too confident in what you're about to say over the last three weeks because of, and not that Brown was playing great. He was actually having a below yes, average year. Correct. But I just am worried that they're going to try to find number one and not just 
go attack our run defense because it is getting better. They'll probably attack both. Oh, it's been phenomenal the last three weeks. And so then I'm going to address the other okay. point because I think you might be on to something here. The Giants, 21 carries, 90 yards, one touchdown. The Colts, this is on the ground, 30 carries for 106 yards, no touchdowns. In the last three weeks, so against three elite running backs, 68 carries for 269 yards. What does that mean? 3.95 yards per carry. That would put them at sixth in the league. Really? So going up against these three elite running backs, they have been tremendous, and they've also only given up one touchdown. Now, Mike, to your point about the Christmas Eve game, here's a positive, but it could also be a negative for Philly's defense. Okay. The Dallas, Dallas is second in turnover margin in the league. They're plus nine. Who's first? Philly is a plus 13. So to your point about... Because Jalen Hurts doesn't turn it over. And Dak, and we will... I'm going to dive into this tomorrow. Yeah. Dak is turning the ball over at an alarming rate in the first half. And mm. that is something that the Cowboys have to work on. Yeah. I, you know, thinking about that, because I don't want to rag on Dak. Dak is having a good year, obviously, after the injury. It's just one of these things like... I know we try to blame C.D. Lamb, or we try to, like, if you're trying to defend Dak, it seems like what Some you do Some of it is, is on him, for sure. Right, and, and I think it came to the Tony Romo thing. My son asked me during the Cowboys game on Sunday night, hey, who do you think was better or is better, Dak Prescott or Tony Romo? And I said, that's a tough question because they're very different quarterbacks. But Dak's starting to I, – I, and I think Tony Romo was a good quarterback. I always want to, like, preference that so I yeah. don't get, like, a lot of hate. But Tony would make a lot of stupid decisions. Like, the risk-reward there was really stupid, Tony. And I feel like Dak is starting to fall into, Dak, what are, you, what are you thinking right there when you release that football? And we'll dive into that more trust. about how. That's what he's thinking is, I need to trust the, the play. And, and it's remarkable how unstoppable this team has been in the second half. I'm going to walk us through that tomorrow. And if you clean up the first half anywhere near the second half, this team is going to go a long way.